The budding world of modern physics yielded a revolutionary discovery in 1912 from a team of three scientists, Max von Laue and his two assistants, Wilhelm Friedrich and Paul Nipping. In a single experiment, they solved two mysteries in their field at once, the nature of x-rays as a form of light and also how to determine the molecular structure of crystals. Von Laue himself had some decent theory alongside the experiment to explain how crystal lattices diffract x-rays, but it was far from perfect and had some shortcomings. The major component of von Laue's theory that led to its shortcomings lied in the assumption that the zinc blend crystal, which they used for their experiment, had a primitive cube lattice, so when they obtained their diffraction images, he could not explain why certain spots corresponding to certain indices appeared on the photographic plate, while other predicted spots corresponding to other certain indices did not appear. Von Laue offered a couple theories to try to explain this effect, most notably a theory regarding fluorescence of the excited crystal atoms. The theory that would end up being accepted, however, wouldn't come from Von Laue, nor from Friedrich, nor from Nipping. Rather, it would come from a doctoral student who was studying at Cambridge at the time of Von Laue's discovery by the name of William Lawrence Bragg. The name Bragg had already been made familiar with x-rays and diffraction prior to Lawrence entering the field. Lawrence's father, William Henry Bragg, had started his career as a notable mathematics professor, but while teaching, he developed an interest in the field of physics and began to refocus his efforts. William began working with x-rays almost immediately after their discovery in 1895, and over time built up a reputation as a gifted researcher, especially in the field of ionizing radiation. His reputation landed him the Cavendish Chair of Physics at the University of Leeds in 1909, and it was here at Leeds where his research with x-rays really took off with his son. Upon hearing about von Laue's discovery in 1912, William brought up the topic with his son, and the two decided to contribute to the remaining theoretical mysteries in different ways. William contributed on the experimental side, inventing an entirely new device called an X-ray spectrometer to study crystals based on the angle at which the X-rays reflect through them. Lawrence contributed theoretically, developing a rather simple but revolutionary equation relating the wavelength of the incident x-rays to the scattering angle in the crystal. The key part in the development of Lawrence Bragg's equation came from considering how the x-rays scatter through several successive planes in the crystal. In a structure like this, Bragg thought about the conditions necessary to get exiting waves that are in phase when the incident angle equals the scattering angle, with some scattering happening in every layer. For each layer deeper an x-ray travels into the crystal, it travels further and further than the x-rays that are scattered off the layers above it. For the exiting waves to still be in phase and therefore show a strong diffraction pattern, the extra distance the deeper x-rays travel must be some integral multiple of the wavelength of light. From understanding these conditions, all it takes is simple geometry and trigonometry to derive Bragg's law. To further explain the missing spots in von Laue's results, Bragg suggested that the crystal they used, zinc blend, had a face-centered cubic lattice rather than a primitive cubic lattice. This means that atoms are present on the faces of the cubes of the unit cell, as well as in the corners of the unit cell, which would result in an entirely different diffraction pattern from a crystal with a primitive cubic lattice. To put Lawrence Bragg's theory to the test, William Bragg worked with his son using his newly developed X-ray spectrometer. The apparatus consisted of three main parts. The first was a collimator, which is a device that narrows the incident x-rays by means of passing them through narrow slits. The second was a crystal mounted on a turntable so that the incident angle could be adjusted at will. The third was an ionization chamber with two more slits in between it and the crystal turntable. The incident x-rays would be fired through the collimator, reflected through the crystal, would pass through the other two slits, and enter the chamber ionizing the gas inside and causing a current to flow between two electrodes. 
this current would be measured by a galvanometer. More current would mean more ionization, which would in turn mean that the x-rays would be more in phase after reflecting through the crystal and entering the chamber. So, by measuring the current, they could determine the optimal angle of reflection through the crystals they used. They calculated the interplanar spacing of the crystal through knowing its density and through knowing Avogadro's number, then used Lawrence Bragg's newly developed equation to calculate the wavelengths of incident x-rays from different metallic sources. William Bragg reported their findings in a paper in 1913, giving credit to his son for what is now known as Bragg's Law. Lawrence Bragg's reputation did not get off to the best of starts, as many at the time believed Lawrence to be piggybacking off his father's achievements, and they questioned the authenticity of his genius. This didn't stop Lawrence, though, and he would go on to write a paper of his own shortly after the original publication, in which he solved the structure of salts and showed how structures of other minerals could be indexed. This led to the eventual determination of the structure of diamond by his father, and the determination of the structure of several other minerals by himself, such as zinc blend and calcite, and even going so far as determining the structure of metallic copper. The experimental genius of William Bragg and the theoretical genius of Lawrence Bragg was quite the combination, and just like von Laue, it took a mere two years after their publication for them to win a Nobel Prize in Physics. The father and son duo shared their prize in 1915 for their services in the analysis of crystal structure by means of x-rays. As monumental as the double discovery by Max von Laue and his team was in 1912, the impact it has had on the scientific world would not be nearly the same without the Braggs. The two of them both theoretically and experimentally reformulated the theories and results put forth by von Laue, refining and improving the method of determining crystal structure significantly, making X-ray crystallography and X-ray spectroscopy the vital fields of science they are today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.